today what we're going to be making is kind of a continuation with last week. I really enjoyed making this um, confetti launcher and I thought let's figure out another way to use it. And so this week I'm going to be showing you how I made a confetti launcher and an extra surprise in an envelope. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you what I made. Wasn't that cool? So let's go ahead and get started on our pieces that we need to get together. Now on the um, confetti launcher and the confetti um, holder, I'm only gonna show this week how we're gonna put it together. Um, go ahead and go to my last video and that will show you a step-by-step -step on how and all the measurements of the confetti launcher. And then our next piece of paper that we're going um, to be needing is the pop-up box. And this is I'm sh our special thing we're going to add to the flinger in our envelope. A lot of us have, I'm sure, made these little pop-up boxes. But I do make mine just a little bit different. I'm going to be using two of these boxes in my video we're going to need four pieces of paper that measure eight and a quarter by seven and a half next piece of paper we're going to be needing is a template that we're going to make and it's going to be six and three fourths by five and our another sheet of paper we'll need just one it's nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter and these two things i'm going to show you an easy trick so we can make envelopes i'm really bad when i start to make things sometimes i forget to take in consideration an envelope so i have a way you can figure out how to make your own size envelopes so we'll need that and then we'll need a piece of paper that is six by six a square that's six by six there's a couple of other things you'll need we'll need um three rubber bands two for our boxes one for our um confetti launcher and these just putting them out they measure about mm, i'm gonna say two and a half inches so those are the other things that we'll also need to create our project and that's it so let's go ahead and get started um, on making this our pop-up box here so again this is a box that measures eight and a quarter excuse me by seven and a half go ahead and uh, score this long ways eight and a quarter size side not size starting at the top at two and three fourths and then five and a half okay and now let's turn it to the seven and a half side and our first score line is going to be at two and three fourths three and a half four and a quarter and seven 
and I don't think I mentioned it, but our red score lines are always going to be our cut line. Our next step is going to be these diagonal lines. And for design space, for the left side, this one measures 3.9 inches, so almost 4 inches. And you're going to position the X at 0 and the Y at 0. And then it's going to be at 45 degrees angle. Okay. And this one again is 3.9 inches. It's going to be 315. So 315 degrees. And the X you'll place at 5.5 and, and the Y you'll place at 0. Dokey. Now, and those two for design space are going to be cut lines. So change, if you left them as score lines, change them to cut lines. Now we're going to work on our cut lines and we're going to work across the eight and a quarter inch side. And our first cut line is going to be four and three fourths inches long. So that's how long it will be. And we're going to place it on the two and three fourths inch on the X and the Y. We're going to position it at the two and three fourths line also, which is this line right here. And then our next cut line, which is here for design space, it's also four and three fourths inches long. We're gonna go up and find five and a half, which will be your X, and then go down and start it at two and three fourths of an inch on the Y. And it should end up right here. So now we're going to turn it and use our cut lines. So we're going to turn it to the seven and a half inch side. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and turn it to the seven and a half inch side of our paper. And our score line is going to be two and three fourths inches long. And we're going to place it at four inches. So this is going to be our cut line. And the Y will be at zero. So then we can get another uh, cut line and it also needs to be two and three fourths inches long and it's going to be here and we're going to place it again at the four inch line for the X. So X will be four inches and then our Y is going to be five and a half inches and it should end up right here for you and then we have all the measurements for design space so let's go ahead and i'm going to show you um, how to cut these off now i already have mine drawn in here but you don't have to draw your line we're going to cut off for the ones that are doing it um, by hand but what we are going to do is in our cutter we're going to line this score line up with this score line on our cut where it'll be cut at so if you see right here I don't know let me see if I can zoom in so if you notice I have this blue edge up here in the cut where it's going to cut and I have this blue edge right here where it's gonna cut so now that we have it all lined up we can just take it off.
and then turn around and we'll do the exact same thing. So now we should have something that looks like so. Go ahead and get our scissors out and we'll go ahead and cut where we need to cut along our cut lines. So we're going to start down here and we're going to cut all the way up to our first score line. So let's go ahead and go over to this side and do the same thing. We're going to cut this line all the way up to our first horizontal score line. Now we should have something that looks like so. Now what we're going to do is go to our one, two, three, third score line and cut it off. Okay, now we should have something that looks like so. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. One, two, three, third score line and cut it off. Voila. We should have something that looks like so. So go ahead and if you're going to do two boxes, go ahead and cut out three more pieces that look exactly like this. Okay guys, we're going to work on our six by six card. Um, we're going to make our first line here and we're going to score it. On the Cricut, you can go ahead and make it a cut line and it's going to be three-fourths of an inch and we're going to place it at one inch. So we'll go up and find one inch and only make it three-fourths of an inch long. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing for this next one here. It's three-fourths of an inch long. We're gonna go down to five and score it all the way down and stop at three-fourths of an inch. Let's move on to our next score line. Each of these horizontal lines are one inch long and we're going to position this first one at three-fourths of an inch. So we're going to go down, find three-fourths of an inch and score it to the one inch line which will meet up with our other score line we already have. In design space, the X you're going to position at zero, the Y you're going to position at 0.75, which is three-fourths of an inch. Moving on over here, we are going to position this score line at five, and it's going to also be at the three-fourths inch. So we can just go down on the five and score it to the edge of our paper. Design space, the X will be at five and the Y will be at three-fourths of an inch. Okie dokie. And then our next score line is going to be at the bottom and it is going to be six inches long so six inches long and we're going to go down to five and place it at five inches. So now also in design space for this heart, if you would like to use it because it's going to give me, I wanted like a little swoop edge. So I wanted something different and the heart is, um, uh, three-fourths of an inch and it should change the other side of the heart to uh, 0.71 and then you're going to place this first heart 
the X at 5 eighths of an inch and the Y at 0 0.08. And you'll just duplicate it and you can go over to the second one and you're going to place it at 4 and 5 eighths of an inch for the X and the Y we're going to position it at 0 0.028. Now, for us that's going to do it by hand, all I did is took my heart, and I just want a heart, and I drew it down the center. So, I made just like so. I did a swoop like so, and came on this side, and swoop like so, and used this center line here as my guideline. Now, since we're already here, let's go ahead and cut it out. So, what we're going to do is cut this line and this line. So, we have, should have something that looks like so. And we can go ahead and do the other side. Now I'm going to follow my swoop up here. There we have it. Okay, now we can go ahead and set this aside until we're ready for it. Okay, guys, let's move on to our envelope. And since we have to do an envelope, I wanted to show you a neat trick to figure out how to make any size envelope. So, if you know your card size, you can figure out your envelope. So, this is the card size that I wanted for the envelope. And so, it's four and a half by six and a quarter. So, we need a template. And to figure out how to make the template, you're going to add a half an inch to each of these numbers. So our four and a half would become five inches, right? And then if we add um, a half an inch to this, it's going to become six and three fourths. And that is the size of our card here. So it's six and three-fourths by five. So now we have our template. So then to figure out what size sheet of paper we need, we're going to add three inches to our biggest number of our card. So that's gonna be six and a quarter. So if we add six, three inches to six and a quarter, that's gonna give us nine and a quarter. So that is how we got this paper size. And you can do this with any um, rectangle shape card. Now, if you're gonna do, um, make a square, instead of adding three inches to the largest number of your card, you're gonna add four inches to your um, largest number. So let's say if we had a square, <clears throat> I'll do it this way, if it's a square, and let's say our square is uh, six by six. So we're going to add a half an inch to each one. So it would be six and a half by six and a half for our template. And then to get, <clears throat> excuse me, to get our square, we're going to add four inches to our largest number, which is six. So that's going to make it a 10 by 10 square, which would be this. And that's just a really easy way to figure it out. Then what you do is with your template, 
you're going to mark the middle, which is two and a half. And we're going to place it, hold our square into kind of a diamond shape. And we're going to place it in the center of our square, like so. And then all we do is line this up from this point to the middle as best as we can and just fold it down. And how I learned this is my mother, she taught me this and she was actually the first one that introduced me to a cricket. And she had the cricket that had the cartridges on it, which has changed so much since I've gotten my cricket. So now that we have everything folded, we have our envelope. Let's go ahead and unfold it. And then I like to cut my corners out, if you can see on the score line, excuse me, where we made it. Cut those out and it'll fold it up so much easier. And I try to do mine at a little curve on the edge. So we have that done. So it should lay so much better. I didn't cut that one quite right. Then what I do with this is you can take your pencil whatever you would like to use. And I kind of line my little folder and I'm gonna do a line. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and snip it off. And there we have it. And then we can take our eraser and erase it and voila, we have our envelope. So let's go ahead and glue this down. And there we have it, our cute little envelope. Let's get our pieces out to make our pop-up boxes. And here's my first one. So, um, you should have made all of these already. And now I'm gonna show you how I cut mine out just a little bit different. Um, I found that if I do this, the boxes seem to line up so much more. So here on this edge, it doesn't have to be perfect, just snip the sides off a little. Same on this side. And then also down here at the bottom. Now let's go ahead and fold on our score lines. And I'm just gonna do these first right here so I can show you what I do that's a little bit different. 
in this. So I turn this over and take my extra and cut this off. And then the same for this side. Then after I do that, we're gonna take this corner to this corner. Let's first score it. So after we fold it this way, we're gonna take this corner over here to this corner, corner to corner. And try to be as precise as you can. It really seems to help. Then when we have that, let's go over to the other side. So we'll score here. This corner to this corner. So if you notice, on these two pieces, we have extra. Let's go ahead and cut that off. And now we should have something that looks like so. And we're going to do that to all of our pieces. Now let's go ahead and fold on these score lines. So we should have something that ends up looking like so. Okay, now let's go ahead and do this piece. Now we're going to take one of these tabs, I want this to be the outside, so whichever side you want it to be the outside, you want to glue this on top. So let's go ahead and glue or tape that down. Okay, now that we got that done. we can go ahead and do this part okay so on these how I like to do it I like to find put a little reinforcement on it so what I do is with my extra pieces that I have left one of 
the score lines as is is exactly as wide as this and then there's one that's not this is the side I like to use and then I just use this as my middle line and then I'm just gonna guesstimate here I have something that looks like so and I'm going to use my score line that's there to put it over and do it in half. Then I'm going to line this score line up on the same score line that was already there. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I found with this uh, Cricut paper that I get from Cricut, it tends to tear it very easily so I found if I put a reinforcement uh -oh, sheet on it that it does so much better and if you guys prefer to do it how they put it in a hole and tie it in a knot I said go for it and do it that way. So that's what it looks like, my piece. So you can see there's an edge because I didn't want it all the way up to the fold line right here. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other end. So. Then how. I like to do it is fold my paper in half in the score line and then we're gonna trim it and I'm we're going I'm gonna go deeper than I did these so probably about like so and then do the same thing to the other side So we should have something that looks like that and let's go ahead and go down to the other end so it should look like so and do it so we should have something that looks like that Okay, so now we're going to take our rubber band and it doesn't matter which end you start with and we're going to loop it around. So these sections need to be folded in like so. Okay? Because this is going to be our like lever that makes it pop that expands so it makes it move. So let's make sure we have them folded the right way. So what I've learned along the way, let me move my rubber band. See how we have this all laying down flat? Make sure, see how mine is hitting on top of this flap over here? This one is not so I'm going to go in and trim that and it's going to make it move so much smoother. So I'm just going to take a little smidge off. Oh, there we go. And now see how it's laying perfectly in here. N nothing is hanging over anything and it just fits like a puzzle piece. Let me bring it up so you can see it. See how everything, nothing is going over one another. And that's how we want it. Because then nothing is going to catch on anything to stop it from popping. So I'm going to move my rubber band back up. And if you haven't done this before, these 
flaps we're just going to put glue on is going to go to this section right here. Okay. If you want to struggle and put yours on now, go ahead. I do not. I just make sure my rubber band is laying here. And then I'm going to take my glue and glue it here and here and then flap this over to it. And we want to make sure, see how everything is so smooth and laying out? And make sure guys, because this is where I have so much problem is we have glue really good in that area. And then give it a minute to set and then we'll open it up. And this is what we should have. And to me, people struggle, usually take this and loop it over and they hassle and they pull with it and my thing is why fight with it you know do one end and then put the rubber band on the other end so let's go ahead and put this flap folded in right so we want to make sure it's like so and the same thing with this end if you folded it up the opposite way like me And then before I do anything else, I'm going to make sure when I fold my end down, not, nothing is coming over. And see how it is? So I'm going to snip that off. Sit smoothly with, without catching on each other. So before we glue this in, let's make sure we take our rubber band and put it through here. So uh -uh. now it's looped around like so. So now I'm going to pull this down, pull this down. And glue and then fold my flap over. So let's go ahead and get the glue on our little areas here. And just hold it here for just a little bit to make sure your glue is adhered before you let it go. Now the only thing we have left to do is take our tab here and put glue on it and we're going to glue it to the inside of our box. And see how nice that turns out? Okay guys, let's move on to making our confetti launcher. Just a reminder, again, if you want to see the whole video of how it's made and the measurements, go ahead and go to my previous um, video and look at it, but I'm also going to put it in a link um, below. But let's get started on this. So what I like to do for the six tabs here is snip off the edges of them. So it should look like so. 
and then we also can go ahead if you would like snip our little circles and you can do it right on the score line that's already there for you and then we just need to fold along the score line and then glue them down Once we have these glued down, you can go ahead and score these if you would like your ends. Okay, and now let's set this side aside and work on these score lines. Okay, once you have them all folded, I am going to cut this one a little bit different than in my previous video, only just to get rid of some of the bulk um, of, out of the envelope. So how I'm going to do it is snip these corners. And it, it just about that much is what I'm taking off. It's not going to mess or do anything with the confetti launcher, and it lays so much better, too. Flatter. All right. Now that we have that done, we're going to take our confetti holder, and we're going to put glue here, and we're going to place it on this center one. And it should look like this. Now we're going to place tape at both ends. Or you can use glue when you get ready to do it. I use both on this because I feel like it makes it much stronger. Now we're going to add the rubber band to it. So go ahead and tie this and I try to get it in the center as much as possible. Make a knot like so. And we're going to loop it through this set of holes and then we're going to come down here and loop it through these two sets of holes. So let's go ahead and do that. It should look like so. Okay, so it's so it's not getting in the way of our pull here sign and not getting in the way of the score line down here. This is how we're going to place it and it will so y'all can see this so it place it here and then we'll pull it forward like so and then it'll fling so if you can see on this one just right before the score line is where I placed my tab that needs to be glued down or taped down whichever you I, I like to use both on this because it it's got some punch to it so this we're going to place about like so right before the score line so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to tear my tape off and then add some glue Now we really need to let this set and dry for a minute so I really like to give it some time 
to sit in. So guys, I decided I'm not going to put anything on my cubes. I like them just how they are. But what I think I'm going to do is maybe write a message here. Um, that's just kind of what I'm feeling right now. But anyways, I wanted to show you how to put this um, together so we can go ahead and see what that's like. So we have our envelope, right? Get that ready. Now we need our two cubes and we need to put confetti in here. I have confetti and I just chopped my own little paper up and I showed in my last video how I did that also. So once I get my confetti in here, I'm going to put my little tabs down. Nope, I'm going to get my boxes ready. So have your boxes ready. And then we're gonna put the confetti, push it forward, and then put the tabs down to hide the confetti. And then we're gonna put the boxes on top of it. So that's what's gonna help keep the confetti launcher. And then our boxes fit right in our little fold. And then we're gonna take that and stick it inside of our envelope and push it down in here and there you have it And there you go. Wasn't that really cool? We did it. And thanks for crashing with me. And I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.